Hey boos, welcome back to this face. If this is your first time, do not make it your last. We're all about fashion, lifestyle, and a bunch of general nonsense. <laughs> How you guys doing? Not me wearing a wig. Not me <laughs> wearing a wig, guys. I don't know if you've been following my vlogs. I've been complaining about the braids and the, the sun, the weather, the heat, everything. So I had to take off my braids and I just did like I'm weaved my hair. And the only option I have now is to wear a wig. <laughs> so the wig life is not for me, but we're gonna just do it. So guys, coming from my birthday, I just feel like the whole month of March is my birthday, whether I like it or not. And anything concerning my birthday, I'm going to talk about it. <laughs> so guys, for today's video, I just wanted to, I wanted to actually talk about this in a vlog, but I just felt like it would be too long to put into a vlog. So I decided to make it a different video altogether. I don't know if I've done something like this on my channel, but I was just going through my videos and I don't think I've done something exactly like this. So basically, I just want to share with you guys things I have learned in my 32 years of living <laughs> as a married woman, as a mother, as a woman, as a human being, whatever it is. I feel like every day I keep on learning. <laughs> every year I keep on learning. The older I get, I keep on learning. So I don't think learning is ever going to stop. It's going to keep on changing. So I can even do this video now and maybe next year things have changed or two years time or five years down the line things will change. So it's never like going to be the same forever that is the whole point of growth that's the whole thing of maturing growing experiencing stuff your views on a lot of things are going to change so these are my views as of now and the way i see life now and things i've learned you know so far so first things first nobody owes you anything you have to get to a point in your life where you have to realize that especially for women i don't know how it is for guys i feel like guys grow faster in terms of their parents or their upbringing lets them become independent faster compared to women. You know women how it is now, you go to school, they don't want to have a boyfriend, they want you to finish school and get married. So from your husband's house, oh sorry, from your father's house to your husband's house. So although it's changing now, but I know most of the time it's always that same concept. Go to school, don't stress yourself. When you come out, you go to your husband's house. So we don't usually have that sense of responsibility and some women out there still feel like people owe them something so it can be your husband it can be your boyfriend it can be society we just feel like well i felt like that for a while where i felt like someone owes me something like you can't just leave me out here to be you know hustling and being independent but life has taught me the hard way nobody absolutely nobody owes you anything if you want something you go out and you get it. It's not going to land on your lap. Nah. You're going to go out there <laughs> and you're going to work hard for it and you're going to get it. You have to do something about it because life just does not work that way. It doesn't. So nobody owes you anything. It's okay to let go of some relationships. It is okay. I think I actually learned this earlier than now. I think I learned this in my 20s. I feel like after my wedding, <laughs> I feel like after women like get married, like on your wedding day is when you would cut a lot of friends off or family members or just look at some people in some kind of way like hmm i don't know if it happens to just me but i feel like most people or my friends have said the same thing like after their wedding the kind of people that they cut off eh? so and it's not even necessarily because they didn't show up or because they didn't support they'll just kind of show their true characters you know your wedding day is like a very important day in your life and some people just show their true characters that period you're just looking at them like hmm, so that's who you are but besides that even in life generally to grow you have to let go of some things to grow you have to let go of some things and this is not just exclusive to friends anytime we talk about letting go of relationships we always um, put it to friends but even family members like you feel like you have a family member that is toxic you feel like you have a family like an auntie and uncle whatever it is i just feel like it's just stressing your life and there's no point just cut off that relationship I am not here advising, fighting, quarreling, beefing, all those kind of things. No. In fact, it shouldn't even get to that point where you have to cut the person off because people had a huge fight or because, you know, you said things you could not take back. I just feel like just one morning when there's nothing wrong, no quarrel, no argument, no nothing, just disappear. Like, we have to now to disappear in people's lives. Like, if you just feel like someone is toxic, this person, anytime you hang out with a person, person just causes you stress. Do you understand? Just disappear from that person's life. Just do you live your life don't force anything that is not there because it has a way of drowning you you won't even know it has a way of drowning you. it has a way of making you feel like you cannot grow 
beyond certain points in your life because you have to always think of what would this person say what would this person do how would this person react to the news how would this do you understand like you don't need that you don't need to share all your good news with people that you know that don't mean well to you like i'm sure we know that by now you know this person doesn't mean well so why are you constantly sharing your good news this person or sharing your plans or things like that do you understand so it's very important even parents <laughs> even parents as well because i know some people that are in toxic relationships with their parents as well so you just have to realize that it's okay <laughs> it's okay to cut off those relationships and just live your life and form new relationships that would make you a better person so if you feel like you're lacking something for example in your parents you can get new parents it can be your uncles it can be your boss it can be whatever it is those people that are more like a parent figure like a father figure a mother figure whatever that you feel like you're lacking from the toxic relationship you had growing up that is the only way you can heal the trauma and not pass it down to your children it's not by force yes they gave birth to you but if they're toxic if they don't mean well if they've showed you so many times that they don't mean well for you it's okay let's go this next one is about marriage and you guys know by now i am not even someone that gives marriage advice it's like in fact my advice for marriage is don't receive marriage advice from people <laughs> that is my marriage advice to you don't listen to anybody like do you go but this one basically i just want to put this is the only thing here that i've learned that is about marriage that i'm going to talk about here but what i have learned i've been married for going to six years this year right but what i have learned because <laughs> i'm still a JJC when it comes to marriage but my definition my own my own definition of marriage or what i've learned or what i have seen marriage to be is a conscious just like love it is a conscious decision every day between two of you not four of you not five of you not the both of you and your children not the pastor not your father not your mother not your in-laws not your siblings it is a conscious decision between the both of you husband and wife both of you not only one person you have to wake up every day and decide <laughs> that you want to be married bruh i am saying this because if i got married i always had that thing where i felt like the job was for the man because i mean we grew up seeing that is the man that would ask you out on dates is the man that would have to work hard for you get you ask you out um go ask for your hand in marriage propose to you do all of that so it's almost like it's his job to love you no doubt but <laughs> marriage is a lie <laughs> is a lie you have to wake up every day and decide like every morning you as the woman you as the man like today i still want to be married <laughs> today i still want to be what married the moment is just one person waking up every day and deciding they want to be married that will be the moment is that only person that will be putting in the work to make it happen and that is when you would consider your marriage a hard marriage a difficult marriage the other person has stopped deciding and the other person is now showing signs that me i don't want to be married again the other person has still misbehaving acting like you don't care doing all those things and it's now you that decided to carry raj and said that i want to be decided to get married you're gonna be what stressed <laughs> you're gonna be stressed so is that constant checking in and making sure that we're both on the same page right we're, we're, we're okay we're, we're good we're good right good so like i said i had this whole thing where i felt like the whole thing was for the man but growing up and with this six years I have come to realize that it is a conscious decision between the both of you. It's not left for one person to do. Or when they say things like um, a marriage is, 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 is a marriage lasts long because of the woman. It's the woman that will decide whether she wants her marriage to last. It's a lie. It's both the man and the woman. It was only the woman deciding the woman will come out stressed. She'll come out very, very stressed. You'll be looking at her, you'll be like, God damn it, I don't want to be like you. Nobody wants to be stressed. So we're going to divide the stress. It's 50 from me, 50 from me. We're going to break it up. In fact, 100 for me, 100 for me. Together, we will decide that we want to get married. Because the moment you make that decision, the moment you're willing to work on any issues that you guys are facing, the moment you decide that this person is my person, whether you like it or not, we die here. <laughs> Do you understand? It's not just one-sided. Do you understand? So yeah, that is my own law from what I've learned in marriage so far and i feel like once you people have that same mentality you people have that same um mindset it's it's sweet it's sweet i'm not saying there are no issues though but just knowing for a fact that anyhow 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 <laughs> anyhow the devil want to play this person is my person and tomorrow i can count on the fact that this person is going to wake up and be there do you understand to make it work you get me you get me okay <laughs> that that's all i can tell you when it comes to marriage every other thing 
please do it according to your partner do it according to your life with i can't i can't be here sharing marriage advice okay because i don't know anything and see me zero i don't know anything Thank you. Next thing I've learned is that your mistakes and failures do not define you. They do not define you in any way. In fact, whatever you feel after making a mistake is what you let yourself feel. However you want to act after your mistake is what you let yourself feel. Like, nobody has the power to define you based on your mistakes or based on things you've done. Do you understand? It's all left to you. If you want it to drown you, if you want it to just kill you, it will kill you. But if you don't let it define you and you just rise above it and do better, now it makes sense. Do you understand? You have to do better. Okay, I fucked up here. How can I do better? <laughs> so you can move on from it. But if you let it um, drown you, you're dwelling in it, you're saying, I messed up, I did this, I did that, this is who I am, this is my life. That is exactly who you are. That is exactly what your life is going to be. Next one is, know that saying where they say, it can never be me. <laughs> it can be you. And it will be you. It can never be me. It will be you and it can be you. See, life has made me realize that no one we're younger, when we're younger, there are so many things I know I just need to go blah, blah, blah. it can never be me. How can you? Oh my god, it can never if, if I see if someone if someone blah, 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 then it's not happening. I'm like hey, it's really me. It really happened to me. It's it will happen. It can be you. You can say things like, oh, um, what example will I give now? Maybe, for example, yeah, maybe I, I did something I always say every time, but it does not happen to me yet, but that doesn't mean that I feel like it cannot happen to me. I'll be like, someone can never defraud me, for example, or, you know, dupe me, that kind of thing. I'll be like, how do people even fall for nonsense like this? How can someone just come and just defraud you or dupe you or scam you and tell you this and tell you that? Like, I don't know how people do that. Oh my God, it can never be me. It can never be me. It can be you, my sister. It can be you, my brother. So I think what I mean by this particular lesson is that I've seen it happen so much to people that I've come to realize that that thing I'm always saying can never be me. It can actually be me. So the point is, when it happens to you, how are you going to fix it? Do you understand? How are you actually going to deal with it when it happens to you? So don't look down on anything. Don't feel like you're above anything. It can actually be you and you would never know how it's going to work for you. Or you say things like, um, um, no one can ever raise their voice at me. It can never be me. You dare not shout at me. You dare not do this. You dare not insult me. It can never be me. Then one day someone insulting you, like, oh, they really insulted me. <laughs> do you understand? Like, you have to realize that life has a way of surprising you and doing those things to you where you're like, wow, it's actually me. It actually happened to me. Or you'd be like, I can never fight with somebody. It can never be me. I can never be physical. Then someone will push you one day and ask yourself, slap this on and beat someone. You're like, ah. How did I get here? Do you understand? So yeah, I have actually learned in life that all those times you say it can never be me, this can never happen to me. There are a good, there's a very good chance that it can happen to you. Life will surprise you. Life will shock you. It's not you yet because you've not been faced with that kind of challenge or anything, but it's possible. Nobody is above mistakes, you know? Nobody is above it. It can happen to you. Next one is be kind. I always say this is like almost like a motto that I live by. Be kind to yourself. Be kind, be gentle to yourself. We are our own worst critics. I feel like there's nothing... When people go online to throw people and insult people, oh, you look like this, you look like that, this will happen. I feel like those people, they kind of already know. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Like, we are the hardest on ourselves. So it's worse when... It's different when someone is out there insulting you and saying bad things to you and hurtful things to you. When you're saying to yourself, it's worse because you actually believe it. You've told yourself, I am a horrible person. I am an ugly person. I am this, I am that. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve good things happening in my life. You know, things like that. So we have to be kind to ourselves. And these things, they always form from our environment. It can be from the way we grew up. It can be from the friends we had. It can just be from our environment where we just feel like we're not deserving. Maybe because of the relationships we had in the past, they didn't really give us that much. They didn't love us. They didn't show us love. So you automatically grow up and think that you don't deserve love. You understand? Maybe you grew up in a situation where you felt like like someone was not there for you so even when you enter the new one you just feel like you don't deserve for someone to be there for you so you do things to jeopardize the person being there for you the person being there for you and just loving you be like i don't deserve this all these good things in life i don't deserve it that's never happened for me and my family that's never happened in my life i don't deserve all these things it's a lie any good thing happening in your life you deserve it always be kind to yourself don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty for good things happening in your life. Don't feel like because it's not happening for someone else, you should be ashamed of the good things happening for you. Be kind to yourself. Accept that things that are happening for you should be happening for you. Like, why shouldn't it be happening for me? Why shouldn't I be happy? Why shouldn't I get all the good things in life? Like, what does that have to do with anything? Like, 
<laughs> what does my light have to do with your light? Like, if your light is dim, okay, cool. Like, my own is still shining bright. Like, do you understand? So, yeah, definitely be kind to yourself and accept that you deserve everything good happening in your life. Definitely. Next one, which I have known for a long while as well. So, in fact, I feel like this this was kind of... How will I put it? Like, it, I don't know what it is, but I, for as long as I can remember, I have always had this delusional mindset where... I just imagine things happening for me like I will not have it I don't have the money to do it I don't have the capacity to do it but I just know it's going to happen I don't know I've always had that like since I was in primary school secondary school I've always called myself a daydreamer like I just always imagined a good life so I would say my mindset has always been a rich mindset so basically the lesson is you are only as rich as your mindset but I feel like with this particular one I have known it for the longest time and I've always live my life that way so and with this it has a way of making you appreciate things when it comes and making you content with things when it comes you're not looking outside you have kind of low you, you won't have um complex issues right because what someone else has has nothing to do with what you're thinking of i don't know how to explain like <laughs> i don't know how to put it my mindset is so rich that i can't even bring myself to be jealous or envious of someone else do you understand i just tap into it i just be like i tap into the blessing i tap into this i don't ha i can't be jealous of it because my head is so occupied with how my life is already meant to be and the things i want and you know everything like i'm constantly daydreaming that i cannot i cannot <laughs> i just have a very rich mindset i have a rich mindset i always think of the best for myself and you know what they always say once you think it it is going to happen I am a living testimony of that no matter how stupid that thing is no matter how little that thing is no matter how irrelevant that thing is once you think it and believe that this is your life this is it this is what I want this is what is going to happen for me whether I like it or not right it's going to happen <laughs> it just is like the law of attraction it's, it's going to happen right because there are certain people that they actually have the money like the physical wealth right money assets all of that but they have a very or mentality they have that thing of I cannot do anything for myself I cannot do anything for people they'll be stingy they'll hold on to it because they don't know how long it's going to last they don't I don't know how to explain it and that is the worst kind of people I don't like people that have poor mindsets like that see things as a big deal things are not meant to be a big deal they see it as a big deal like it's not that deep <laughs> I don't know how to explain it it's not that Anytime I'm thinking about anything, so dream is free. So why put a price tag? Why limit yourself? Anytime I'm thinking about anything concerning my life, my future, whatever, no price tags. I dream and dream big. Like it scares me, and I love that for me. <laughs> so yeah, you're definitely only as rich as your mindset. You can have all the money in the world. If you have a poor mentality, if you have a poor mindset, you would only go so far. You won't go so far. I promise you. So open your mind up. Open your mind up. It's free. Stop limiting yourself open your mind up be delusional be delusional is very important money definitely brings happiness we see money money brings happiness i think where people say things like money doesn't bring happiness is when you already have a void when you have demons you're fighting and you have a void and you're not a content person you know when they say how someone spends one thousand naira is how the person is going to spend one million it's how the person is going to spend one billion is your mindset is the way you walk all these things they say money will change money is not changing anything it's who you've always been money is not changing nada it is who you've always been so don't think for a second that because Oh, you don't have one billion you have only 100k you're a very chilled person you're very humble that's who I am no when that one billion comes if you're really an arrogant person it will show that you're an arrogant person if you're really a nice person it will be the same thing with that money do you understand so money definitely brings happiness that anybody telling you money doesn't bring happiness is a liar but if you're not a content person if you already have demons you're fighting if you have a void that you have to fill money will not fill that void for you it really will not fill the void because you will see yourself you have all the money in the world you have everything and you still feel very empty but if you're already a happy person you're already a content person you're already a loving and giving like you're just filled with joy and happiness 
money is going to bring happiness like you need money to be the best version of yourself someone like me i don't have issues <laughs> i don't have any void if money comes that that whatever it is i'm facing is gonna <laughs> it's gonna be okay <laughs> it's gonna be what all right <laughs> for sure yeah next is people's opinions of you should not matter does not matter yes to an extent of course we like to please it's normal human beings we have to know how to please because we need people to get some things or to get somewhere or to acknowledge us or to, or to make us feel like we're doing something right. I get it. I get it. So let me just put it this way. That's why I say it shouldn't matter. It matters, but it shouldn't matter because if you depend so much on people's opinions, you kind of live your life. You will live, you will live your life just depending on what will people say. How would they take this? How would they do that? And that would kind of limit you from being the best version of yourself. Do you understand? So let it be the other way around, where you do things and regardless of whatever you do, people should say whatever they want to say. It doesn't change anything, but not doing things hoping that people will say this and say that about it. I'm not explaining that. I don't know if it makes sense. Like, live your full authentic life, be your full self and disregard whatever is going to come with it. Do you understand? So whatever comes fine, good, like it's not your issue. Just do you. It's fine, like, just live your life. It's Another thing, again, I think this is very common with millennials. M maybe not not all of us, I don't know, but I'm, I'm sure quite a few, few of us, we come from a family where our parents don't show affection or show emotions or show any kind of love towards themselves and towards the kids i don't know what it is like parents <laughs> they just felt like like imagine like your father telling a father telling the son i love you like oh ew, oh my god <laughs> stop that we had that mindset right so if there's something i've learned the fact that i didn't get that growing up and it's not not that they didn't love you they had the way of showing it obviously they'll take you to the best schools they'll give you everything you want things like that but i mean being physically affectionate physically loving it wasn't something that was normal in my household and a lot of households I know around me. But one thing I've learned is that it has a way of affecting the kids. So I have learned to show love and affection to my kids, not only when they're children or when they're babies. I want it to be a normal thing, so they'll see it as a normal thing to show to people because that affected me in a way that I don't know how to show love and affection to other people. I can do it to my children because they're my children, right? But like to other grown-ups, like I used to say things like, I don't even hug my friends that often. Like I can, my friends can come and see me and we're not like, oh my God, hug, hug, hug. Or I'm not explaining it. I'm, I'm trying now. It's getting better. But it got, it was, it was so bad that I could not, I wasn't physical with people. Like don't hug, like it was just weird. It was awkward. I'm like, why are you, why are you hugging me? Why are you touching me? Why are you? was all that why are you telling me i love you like stop it do you understand but i feel like with time and with age and even meeting the kind of person that i'm married to now my husband i've kind of relaxed <laughs> with myself i've told myself calm down show love to people say i love you hug people be affectionate because you don't just assume that people know that you love them you have to show it you have to be touchy feely you have to be you have to just be carefree about it and love people and not think too much about it so it's something i'm definitely still learning but i can see the huge difference in my life it makes me feel better actually i feel good knowing that i can show love and affection to my children i can say i love you you know want to hug them want them to be around me and everything it's actually a good feeling and then they feel like it's okay when they grow up as well whether they're dealing with their friends or dealing with their partners or whatever it is not always feel like not touch me i can't tell you this again. so yeah definitely <laughs> being affectionate especially in front of my kids i want it to be something that they're very used to and something that they see as a normal thing yes. not, i've said this before actually i think i always say it but the more i grow up the more i realize that not wanting children <laughs> and i just been talking about children and showing affection and love but not wanting children is fine it's okay I understand you people <laughs> especially for someone that's currently pregnant I get anyone that says I don't want kids I don't some women will be like I've tied my tubes I don't want to get sucked into it I don't want to try it I, don't. I understand when I was younger I didn't understand I used to see those that will say I don't want kids I'll be like what do you mean you see people that get married they'll be like I want to get married but we don't want kids we just want to, we just want to enjoy each other be like, what does that even mean why are you getting married then <laughs> see I understand I understand people out there that are married and they're just enjoying their lives, they don't have kids. In fact, they'll probably go and adopt or just have like an orphanage that they, they kind of give money to. They don't want to worry about going through the process, they don't want to worry about training a child, raising a child. I understand you 100%. I get you 100% because raising kids, having kids, is not easy. Do whatever you want to do. 
you see do try it if it doesn't work you know you have tried it just do it if it, does, if it doesn't work you've done it it's fine you won't start a business start that god damn it guys do you know how many things i've done in my life <laughs> do you know how many things i have done in this my life i don't i think i've mentioned it in one of my videos guys i have done it all makeup i have done it i even did like my friends wedding makeup i did some celebrity makeup like whatever i went to my makeup artist phase uber I did Uber, not that I was the driver, but I had a driver that was driving Uber and I did Uber, I registered everything, I went for the classes, I had Uber, I did Uber for a while, food truck, food business, I entered it, I had a food truck for a while, I was selling food, standard, shows, entertainment, concerts, I did it, I had a record label, I think I even signed two artists or three artists at some point, yes, I, I don't even think I registered that record label, I don't even know how it happened or how they trusted me to sign them, I don't even know what I was going through, I was actually in school, I was in uni, I had a record label, I had nonsense money to throw around and i bought them laptops i gave i used to give them money to go to the studio to get record songs i just believed in them i was like wow music music is my calling <laughs> i had that phase obviously fashion we had the fashion phase and everything like i even did interior deco ah i, I had a portfolio and everything i set it up i had my first meeting actually went i met them everything they finished i finished giving them the prize showed them my portfolio everything blah 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 by the time i gave them prize they ran and I think that was the end of the chapter with the interior deco thing. I was like, why are you running? Why are you running? Why are you running? <laughs> because I gave you a price. You want something nice, Abby? Money. The money killer. They were like, no, we can't afford you, blah, blah, blah. I told my husband, well, I'm not doing it again because I cannot be doing cheap interior deco. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I did interior deco. What else did I do? What else did I do? I feel like I've done a lot. Obviously, YouTube. YouTube, I've been doing YouTube since. I had a blog before YouTube. Oh, God, it wasn't on my blog. It might even still be there affordable luxury dot blog spot. i'm not sure but yeah i had a blog first it, my ogs you guys know that i started off with my blog spot first where i would go buy things and i'll be writing like my review on the things i bought i'll just be if i'm doing my makeup i'll be writing my step to step step by step makeup routine i was using my webcam my camera my laptop webcam to record myself for youtube then i don't think the videos still exist but i think my blog is still there i think was it the real Ziggy ad block. No, I think it's affordable luxury at blogspot doc. I can't remember. I have to confirm it. But yeah, so I was doing that and doing my YouTube when I was still in uni. That was like 2009, 2010. That's when I was on YouTube. But I stopped obviously for like a very long time for years before I started off again with YouTube. So I've always been that kind of person. Like, if I hear this is happening and I hear that it's something that I would enjoy doing and I want to do, I'll do it. It doesn't have to be successful. Do you understand like it doesn't always have to be successful it doesn't have to be a hit but me telling myself that i know that it won't be successful will not stop me from doing it i'm gonna do it <laughs> if it doesn't work out i know that i've done it so yeah definitely i think it's something that i have I've, I've, I've realized in life just do stuff enjoy it because it develops you as a human being it makes you learn a lot of things because once you enter that field you learn a lot of things about that field right so it's never wasted knowledge you just know that it's just there do you understand just build yourself up do stuff don't let anybody stop you don't feel shy don't feel ashamed if you're as, as i'm talking to you now you don't have your youtube channel for example and you've been saying oh i don't start my youtube start it if you have 100 views 200 views if you're on youtube for one year and you realize that it's not for you you'll stop it like nobody will beat you do you understand if i do this youtube now i feel like ah this youtube is stressing me out or maybe i'll win the lottery you think i'll still be here <laughs> if i win one billion dollars i'll be out I'll, I'll say what what do you says do you get it like it's not that deep i'm selling clothes now if tomorrow now they'll say that ah, they, they they put money inside my account and you can travel the world that is my, my dream life let me tell you guys my dream life traveling around the world just having properties around the world traveling money hey god just shopping shopping spending <laughs> traveling just living that you think i'll still be selling clothes i will stop it even if I'm still selling it, it will be like a Zara. I'll just get people to be working for me, open big, big um, factories and just have work. Like, do, do you understand? I don't want to suffer. I don't, I don't want to be a hard worker. I want to be a baller. I want to be a baller. Do you understand? So try it. Do it. If it doesn't work, if you want to say, ah, guys, I forgot. I actually went to the studio and recorded a song. I have a song that I recorded with my friends. Thank God the song doesn't exist anywhere and nobody can ever find it. But yeah, I went to my friends. We were like, oh my God, we we're like five of us. My cousin was there as well. We had a full-blown song, producer, everything. I entered the 
<laughs> the, what they call the boots i did all of that yeah i did it mm -hmm. i had my verse i finished singing they gave us a cd then we're using cds to play it in the car and we 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 fact we, we, we destroyed the cd because we kept on replaying it definitely do whatever it is you want to do and if it doesn't work out fine you move on to the next one okay just help people as much as you can like just help people around you no matter how little i know i have been kind of poisoned because i used to be very much of a helper god damn it i had to help people on the streets and everything and with the way the world is now everybody's eyes are like very dirty and they're just being smart about it so it tends to change your perspective on helping people but i still believe in helping people help people change someone's life just be a change in someone's life that's the best best feeling ever knowing that you were able to change someone's life one way or the other so just help people help people helping people is like the best feeling it is the best feeling ever and don't expect anything in return just help people feel good about it and you'll be all right i promise you <laughs> it's okay to say no it's okay to say no without explaining yourself like you don't have to say yes to everything i used to be an oes member like oh do this for me yes can i have this yes can you give me this yes can you do this for me yes it's fine to say no no i don't want to no i don't want to give you this no like do you understand like they won't beat you it's fine i'm still learning this i really want to get firm in doing this because sometimes you do something and you're angry you feel bad about it so you're like why are you even doing it you don't even feel great doing it why are you saying yes why are you doing it especially when the person is not even doing the same for you the person is not bending over backwards for you so why are you bending over backwards for someone else like it's okay to say no and don't explain yourself it's fine okay don't ever expect you from others so it goes like i said if you want to help someone if you want to do something for someone genuinely like you it doesn't make you feel bad it doesn't make you feel angry when you're doing it right do it and don't think that the person is going to do it back for you the way you did it for the person now i'm not saying do things for people and they don't do anything back for you or they don't help in any way they don't add any kind of value that's not what i'm saying i'm saying that the way you're doing it doesn't necessarily have to be the way they do it do you understand so if you're someone that goes all out for example maybe you you buy gifts you spoil someone all of that that's the way you can show your own love or care and the person is someone that is always there for you for example listening to you being a listening ear you know when you want to vent the person will help you advise you talk you through whatever that is their own way of showing their own love. So you can't compare it to, oh, but I'm always buying gifts for you. I'm always doing this for you. And you don't do anything for me. They are doing something for you. They add some kind of value in your life. But just not the way you're adding value to their life. Yeah? So it's fine to not expect yourself from someone else. Like Do things your way. And don't be influenced by the way they are doing things their way. So long as you know deep down that it's adding value to your life, it's fine. When someone is adding zero value, there's nothing you're doing for me nothing just the useless person in my life why no i don't have that to give you do you understand but yeah as long as person has their own way of the person's job might even be just to be your tunnel partner for example someone that you know that you can count on if you want to turn up you want to forget about your sorrows your worries you can call this person the person is there for you do you understand will talk to you talk chill lift your mood up that is that person's way you can have someone that will pray person will pray for you kabash do this one if you're having a problem call person be like pray for me that's that person's own do you understand then you have someone that is more maybe like buying gifts more i want to buy this for you i want to do this for you i want to do that for you that's that person's way it can never be the same thing it can never be the same way so it's just fine for everybody to you know <laughs> do things their way and don't expect you from the other person as you grow older <laughs> i it, it kills me when i see people that are old and mature and grown and they cannot say sorry at your big age i will tell you you this so, so, so thing to me and you cannot say sorry i don't know how people do that like it's it's fine to fault it's fine to make a mistake it's fine it's fine to hurt people it's fine to do something wrong nobody is perfect but when the person has come to you to tell you you this is so wrong and it's difficult for you to acknowledge how you made the person feel and say sorry it blows my mind why is it difficult for people to say sorry and it's worse for me when maybe we were both wrong right you wronged me and i wronged you and you bring it up and i tell you sorry i apologize acknowledge how you feel and then you have to wait for me to tell you to say sorry too or maybe i've even actually said it like i've said okay but do you feel like you did you played any role do you feel like this is this or maybe you did this you did that the person now wants that again no i don't feel like i did anything wrong though. it's just a very nasty dirty attitude i don't like that i don't like like i feel like if you care about someone or value someone and 
you bring up something to the person oh you did this or you said this to hurt me or i don't like the way you handled this and i'm like sorry and you know i'll focus on you first make sure because you're the one that brought it up first right make sure you're good everything apology accepted and then i say things like but do you feel like you played a role or based on what you did la, 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 la. and you'd be like it's not about me we're talking about it's not about me i don't see what i did wrong there how is it concerning me it's just a dirty attitude. I don't know. I don't know. When you see grown ass people doing that, I'm just like, why can't, why is it difficult to just take responsibility and say sorry? Like, why are you too big? Why are you pompous about it? It's not that deep. Just say sorry, acknowledge the person's feelings and move on. Like, ugh, move on. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed everything I listed. I'm sure I have so much more. Like I said, you can never stop learning. But yeah, that's all I have for today. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.